Hello everybody, let's look at how we can support your clients and partners when they're integrating with your APIs by creating API mocks for them and API simulators for them. So we're in the situation where you've got your product, you're the API producer and you're creating this API and your clients will be using them. Uh, that API and they're the API consumers in this case okay so um, what I wanted to highlight first of all is we're here to support uh, you and us together we work together to support your clients uh, so that they can integrate easily and fast with your uh, APIs and that their testing goes smoothly okay so we're part of this testing pyramid uh, the tools don't matter that much what matters is there's a uh, testing uh, approach and an architecture of tests uh, that are being right, uh, run and that ensure the correct integration and um, with help your clients integrate faster and um, with high quality with your APIs. And those API mocks, as you can see, traffic powered API mocks and API simulators are part of this um, um, testing pyramid. So in order to create those mocks, you need to um, uh, think about two things. The first one is who's going to be running them. And the second one is who's going to be testing, creating, testing and deploying them. OK, so let's look at the first question. Who is going to be running them? And you've got four options here. OK, the first option is you're going to be running them. So you're going to have a server that's shared by a number of consumers. OK. The second option is you're going to be running them, but you're going to have one instance of a mocking server per consumer. The third option is you're going to let us run those mocks. So we're going to be uh, running one instance of the mocking server per your consumer. And the fourth option is uh, the consumers are going to be running those mocks themselves. OK, so four options again. They come with trade offs and there's three main areas of interest. What's the consumer separation? So how does one consumer testing impact the other consumers testing? Uh, what's the effort required on the consumer side and on the producer side to make this all happen? OK, so again, looking from the deployment uh, points of view of those mocks, how they're going to be run um, and these three areas of interest, uh, we've got those four options laid out here. And uh, what you see is that if you're using shared mocks and you're running them for your consumers, you, you got to keep in mind that there might be test data clashes, competition for hardware resources, um, where you've got one server that's used by many clients, right? You got to keep that in mind. Uh, I'll share with you some sample workarounds to these issues later on. Um, what's the consumer effort required to implement this option? Well, nothing. Since you're running everything for them, all they need to do is switch from using the Sandbox API on the real production API just to your mocking API and they're done, right? And what's the effort required on your side uh, to deploy these mocks? Uh, virtually none. You just have to uh, run those mocks, uh, set up a server, and that's pretty much it. Then we go to the second option. Um, so what we're changing here again is we're running one mock server uh, per client. So now the risk of issues um, with one client impacting the other clients is much lower. OK, uh, because suddenly they are running on different servers. And if those VMs are running under the same hypervisor, there might be some, you know, competition for hardware resources, still, though less likely. But the test data is totally separate, right? Again, um, there's virtually no work um, required on their side. They're just swapping the URL if you want to use this, if they want to use this environment. There's some more work required on your side because in order to deploy one, de deploy one server per client, uh, you need to have some automated scripts to do that, right, on demand. Uh, fortunately, we can create those scripts for you. So just talk to us if you need those. Third option, uh, the consumer runs those uh, API mocks. So since they're running it, there's no risk in impacting other consumers that don't even know about them, um, that they exist because everything's running, the mocks are running on their uh, machines. And the challenge they have is they need to learn a bit more about the API mocking tool because they're gonna be, cre uh, they're, they're, they need to run uh, this um, uh, traffic powered instance um, on their servers, right? Uh, and then what's the effort required on your side? Well, since you're not running anything, there's virtually no um, uh, you, no effort required on your side. And the fourth option we have here is you can run um, 
uh, the mocks with us. So we're going to be running the mocks for your clients. So um, we run them in a way that um, the consumers have separated, so you don't need to worry about that. Since we're running them uh, for you and for your consumers, uh, there's no uh, work required either on your side or on uh, the API consumer side. Okay. So um, these are the. So this is the answer to the first question: Who's going to run those mocks? And you've got four options here with some trade-offs, right? Then the second question is: Who's going to create? test and maintain those mocks. So let's look at that. And again, we've got four options here. The first option is you as the API producer are gonna create those mocks, update them, test them, and the consumers are gonna just use them. The second option is you share the update, update and testing uh, actions of those mocks with your API consumers. And the third option is you let the consumers create, uh, test, update, and use the mocks. So they do everything, you don't do anything. And the fourth option is you let us do the creation and testing and updating of the mocks and your API consumers just use them. Okay. So how do those options compare? So again, this is a comparison of the four ways to create, test and uh, maintain mocks. And there's four areas of interest. What's the schedule um, impact for your partners or clients? What's the schedule impact to you? Uh, what's the training required for partners? And what's the risk of creating mocks that do not match the real system behavior? Four areas of interest. And uh, we've got four options uh, like we saw just now. Uh, so what happens if the API producer creates those mocks? So you create those mocks and uh, the consumers use it. Well, there's a situation where unfortunately the mocks might not be good enough uh, because they don't support enough scenarios or test data, etc. Uh, that your um, uh, your clients might not be able to use them so uh, they need they rely on you suddenly uh, to update those mocks for them and the challenge is you need to allocate resources to be on standby to fulfill those uh, requests right so there's a uh, the, the schedule the, the schedules of your team and your clients team uh, might be connected right uh, fortunately, there's no uh, training required for the partner uh, because they're not doing anything. They're not updating the mocks. And since you're creating the mocks, uh, there's very little risk of you creating a mock that's not representing the behavior of the real system. Let's go to the next option. So what happens if you create the mocks, but you let the clients update the mocks sometimes? You're separate. The schedules are separated and they can update the mocks if they need to. And you don't have to suddenly pull in, be pulled into uh, their projects to update the mocks uh, to fit their needs, right? And there's minimal training required because you've created the base of the mocks and they're just updating them. So they don't need to know everything about traffic pirate API mocking and system simulation. And uh, they just need to know how to update the mocks. <clears throat> and the risk of creating mocks uh, that are not in line with what the real system does is low because you've created the baseline, right? And then there's the fourth option Sorry, there's the third option, uh, which is the consumers do everything. So there's no risk of customer schedule is impacting yours because they're doing everything themselves. Um, there's um, some training required because they need to know how to use uh, traffic power to create those mocks from scratch. And there's a risk that they might make some assumptions based on documentation or API specifications about how the APIs work and put those assumptions in the mocks, which are incorrect. Um, uh, looking from the, um, the production system point of view, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. And you've got the fourth option, which is we create the mocks for you. So um, uh, we've got dedicated people assigned to these uh, tasks. So, <clears throat> and we've been specializing, uh, we specialize in uh, mocking. So there's low risk of any schedule issues here. And um, you don't need any training because we're doing everything. And since we've been creating mocks for so long and we've got practices uh, built on how to make sure the mocks uh, are representing the behavior of the real system, not just what the documentation and the specs say, uh, the risk of creating mocks that are uh, different, uh, behave differently to what the real system does is quite low. Okay. So again, uh, those are the four options we have for uh, what, how to create, test and maintain the mocks. Okay, so what we've discussed so far is four options how to run the mocks and then how to create and maintain them uh, with their pros and cons. So I wanted to dive in into one workflow for one of these options and then how to mitigate uh, risks 
for one of these uh, risky areas okay just to show you a sample so first of all how would uh, you how how do we typically see customers uh, implement um, mocks for and their APIs when they're exposing them to their clients. Well, um, you, your developers or testers will be uh, developing those uh, mocks locally on Traffic Parrot and testing them locally. And then there's going to be a CI CD pipeline that builds a Docker image and deploys it uh, to the Docker registry, which then gets picked up and deployed to a load balance OpenShift uh, installation. And there's going to be one or more traffic pirate instances running there that can be used then by uh, your API consumers to test uh, against this environment with API mocks. So just a sample workflow just to show you how one of these uh, deployment options could be implemented. And then if we go back to the deployment issues and a big deployment issue here uh, when you're using shared environments across multiple uh, clients, uh, you're, you might have test data clashes, competition for hardware resources, etc. Uh, well, I just wanted to show you one example of how uh, these uh, kind of um, risky areas can be uh, addressed and mitigated. So if we look at that square that we just talked about, uh, test data cl clashes uh, can be mitigated by, for example, uh, generating unique IDs for every new row created. Suddenly, uh, every partner has unique IDs for the row cr uh, data created and uh, using the same data. Okay, uh, you got to keep in mind that when there's a lot of partners using a lot, uh, creating a lot of data in the same mocking environment, uh, you might want to. Uh, think about rebuilding those environments automatically daily weekly or monthly or putting time to live uh, markers or mappings so automatically delete mappings that are older than a day a week etc uh, there's some issues around how to address uh, performance testing so for example uh, when there's a partner uh, we've got let's say 100 partners and one of them starts suddenly sending doing performance testing and sends thousands of transactions per second which might impact uh, the other partners doing their functional testing. So uh, uh, one way of doing this is throttling traffic per client, per partner, or um, assigning um, um, performance environments to individual partners. Okay. And I also wanted to stress that uh, monitoring is always a good idea here because you can monitor with platforms like OpenShift Kubernetes is fairly straightforward to plug in monitoring for disk memory, CPU, and network connections. Uh, so you can see uh, what's going on with your mocking environment and you're not surprised when something goes down. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. If you would like to learn more about the different options, uh, feel free to contact me directly, um, uh, Wojtek at trafficpower.com or uh, you're welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn or uh, follow me on LinkedIn at uh, LinkedIn Wojciech Bulat. Thank you so much for watching and looking uh, forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.